H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. I will see in left outer join. See here it's mismatching. Employee ID is these are not number of records. This is employee ID. So don't get I have six at the last, so don't think that it is six records. I don't have five here. So total in employee table I have five records. In in address table I have four records. So so when you write left out a join, uh it will show me five records. And let me execute this. See now I'm seeing four and six, but for four and six, since I don't have address, it is showing null. That's fine, that's okay. Now if I if I let me show these tables for you again. If I put here right outer join, how many records I will see? Yeah. So now perfectly fine. So all of you are telling correctly. So now let's try to put this. Let me execute this. I am seeing 1, 2, 3, 5, but for 5 I am seeing null here because I don't have the respective matching first name last name. Okay. So that is about we discussed on inner join, we discussed on left outer join, we discussed on right outer join. Okay, let me confuse you a little bit. So let me see how many of you will click correctly. I have here address A left outer join employee EMP on let me remove this okay now can you guys tell me how many records I will have in this yeah I see that no one is getting confused. That's perfectly fine. So four is the answer. So the left table for this is address, and in address, in address, I have four records. So I'll I'll print here one, two, three, five. So let me execute this. Yeah. Okay. Now, even now, when you use left order join or right order join, it's misleading because some employees are are done with filling address but some employees are done with filling employee table so so even if the leadership sees the report now they will think that when you so we want all the records from both the tables so in that case what we need to do is we need to write a join uh, which is called full join okay so full join is something like the combination of left order join and the right order join so can you guys tell me how many records just a guess how many records I will see in full join I am seeing a response like 6 or 5 or even 9 I am seeing 5 I am seeing 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so arithmetic progression ok so let's try to execute this so a full join as I said it's a combination of left order join and the right order join so it will print all the employees. So let me put here a full join. Let me put here, uh, I'll write here an LIS name as EMP table 
comma a dot employee id employee id as add table so i'm just printing both employee ids because some employee ids are not there in address table so so let me execute this full join so if i execute this full join i am seeing six records for five i don't have five in employee table so it is showing null and four and six i don't have in address table so it is showing null so now if somebody sees this the management sees this okay we have total of six employees out of which the employee id 5 has not filled this employee table employees 4 and 6 have not filled their address okay so that is about full join so the full join is the combination of both the tape, both the left outer join and the right outer join okay so any doubts in this any doubts in inner join left outer join right outer join and full join okay now i am going to write here uh, i'm going to write here okay now so i'm not going to tell the question so who is what happens if we have three tables okay three tables is uh, we can even write three tables joins so but i'm not going to cover now so now who wants to take the question so i'm going to ask some questions you can unmute yourself uh, we have these two tables now one of you can unmute and i'm going to ask some questions who wants to take this up Okay, yeah, I see Ravi is yes, unmuted. Okay, uh, Ravi. So now I have employee table, which employee is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. I have address table 1, 2, 3, 5. So now for inner join, how many records I will see? And why? And, and, and why we are seeing that many records? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, for inner join 1, 2, 3, 4, six means like one. five records in the join uh in the join it is in a join in a join we'll check for anyone else i see one more person has unmuted yeah go ahead yeah yeah i think three why Why three records? Because they are common in the bot table. Yeah, you're right. So, so inner join will exactly check for the matching condition, and only those records which are present in both the tables, only that will be printed using inner join. Okay. Now, next question. So, how many records we will see in? So, let me execute this inner join. So. It is only printing one, two, three because inner join will check for the perfect matching condition. Now, how many records we will see in left outer join? Anyone wants to explain this? I'm going to show these tables for you. Yeah, anyone wants to explain? Go ahead, please. Records. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, five records. Why? Uh, the left table is employee and uh, it has a. Uh... Uh, one, two, three, four, and six employee IDs. Uh. Perfect. So Perfect. How about so we don't have four and six in right table, right? So what happens for that? Uh, it, it will be nulls. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ravi. So if I execute this, I will see only five records, and we don't have uh, uh, in address table, so it's printing null. Now. Anyone else want to take want to tell me about right outer table other than Ravi? Ravi and Sarika, they are done now. So anyone else want to take on this uh, right? Yeah, Mona, go ahead. 
it prints core records. Why? Uh, ir irrespective of the matching um, employee ID, it prints the because the writer table is write table is address, so it prints the number of uh, records in the address table. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Now let me execute this. So it will print all the records in the write table, which is address. So it will print four records, and let me execute this. Now let can any one of you other than um, other than Ravi Sarika or Mauna wants to go ahead on full join. I will show you the tables for you. So how many records we will see in full join and why? Who wants to go ahead? Anyone wants to go ahead on? Um, yeah, Priyanka, go ahead. Uh, the record uh, ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 5. So how many records we will see? Uh, six. Six records. Okay. So what is full join? So it is a. Uh, it will uh, take uh, all records from uh, left table and also uh, also from right table. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Priyanka is perfectly right. So a full join will be the combination of left outer join and the right outer join. So the answer here will be. Uh, answer here will be. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me execute this. In case if we don't have matching records in between those two tables, it will print null values. Okay. So that is about uh, left. So that is about uh, inner join, left outer join, right outer join, and, and the full join. So we have one more join which is called cross join. Uh, let's see what is a cross join. Okay. So. So cross join is something like a Cartesian product and a Cartesian product of left order join and right order join. So, so let me execute this. We rarely use cross join. Till now in, uh, in my, uh, nine years of experience, uh, I have never used a cross join. Okay. So let me execute this. But, but just for the reference, please note. So cross join is like the Cartesian product of both the tables. So for every row in the first table, it will, it will give respective all matching in the second table. So it will take first row in the first table. It will have, it will do a join with all the tables, all the rows in the second table. Take the second row, join with all the table, all the rows in the second table. Take the third row in the first table. So let me see how many records we will see. So we are seeing uh, how many records we are seeing. So we are seeing how many records we are seeing. You can see here at the bottom. So we are seeing 20 rows at the bottom uh, uh, left side. You can see how many rows we have. How many rows we have? We have 20 rows. Okay. So so this is about a cross join. A cross join is a Cartesian product of both the rows. So so if you see here, uh, for example, uh, in in employee table, in employee table we have five records. In address table we have four records. So it is taking cross join means for the first record one. Ravi Kumar, it will take it will print this this uh, this four records. And for Ravi Kumar, it will print this value. It will print this value. It will print this value. So it will print all the four combinations with the, with Ravi. And Bharat, it will print all the four. Sharat, it will print all the four. So that is a cross join. You might be wondering where do we use this cross join because we we never so how it will be like Ravi Kumar and this is printing address. So it is printing five addresses for the same person. It is printing for the five people. It's printing the same address for the five people again. It's printing the same address. So very rarely we use it. And for for a simple example where we use is for example, let me take this one. So I have a table called student.
Okay. So I have two tables. Take for example, I have student ID or, or, or even I don't have student ID. Let's take back this. So I have student name. I have student name and, and, and subject name. So I have two tables, students and subjects. So let me execute this. Let me execute this. So I have two students who joined, um, who joined in 10 plus 2. Take for example, I have two students who joined in 10 plus 2. So insert into students values have, for example, Meghnath. And I have one more student. Birth. And in 10 plus 2, assume that I have uh, I have uh, three subjects. Okay. So so I might have English. Let me copy this. I might have uh, science, might have mathematics. Okay, so did I create the tables? Let me check whether I created the tables. I have not, I have created already. Let me check whether I created students' tables. Yeah, I have just created. Now let's try to add the records. Now, if somebody asks you to generate a report like uh, each student has how many subjects. So in this place you can write a cross join because Meghnad has to take these three subjects and even Bharat has to take these three subjects. So every record in the students table should match with all the records in the subjects table. So I can write a join like this. So select, select, select what is the column name? Student name comma subject name from students yes one cross line subjects yes two and I'll give some alias name yes one and here I'll give uh, sorry I'll write here s1 dot and I'll put here I don't have a join condition, so I'm not putting on. Yes, two dot. Okay, so I'm done. I'm good now. Let me execute this. So Meghnath has three subjects, and Bharat has three subjects. So this is where we use uh, cross join. Very rarely we use, but still, just keep a note on this. Like a cross join is a Cartesian product of uh, both the tables. Performance-wise, cross join is a slow because number of records are more in cross join. So what are the joins we discussed so far? We discussed on we discussed on inner join which checks for perfect matching condition. We discussed on left auto join. It prints all the records in left table and if we don't have matching records in right table it will print null values. And we discussed on right join, right auto join. So where all the records from the right table will be printed and if you don't have matching records in the left table it will print null values for that. And we discussed on full join, which is the combination of left auto join and the right auto join. And then we discussed on cross join. Okay. So this is about joins. Any questions here? Yeah. In where condition. Yeah. I got a question saying like we don't need where in the statement of cross join. If you need, you can put on condition. But uh, the example which I showed is we don't have on condition. Okay. So any questions here on the joints we discussed, you should be very clear on writing joints. Okay, so, okay. So with this, we'll move to the next topic, which is store preserves. Okay. So, um, okay. So I'll be sending this. Uh, PDF file which I have. Um, I mean, you can talk to, you can send a mail to H2K team. I'll, I'll, um, I'll mail them to send to all of you this PDF document, which is very good actually for joins, which I prepared some five years back. 
Okay, so this is about uh, writing joints. Uh, what about like if we have cross joints, like where we have the table for employee as well as uh, um, the table that we're working on? So we have to write it down where employee ID, right? Because here we just only student and subject was there. Yeah. So and for employee, why do you need cross joint? Normally we, we yeah, yeah, go ahead. We want to print it out four times, like if we have one, I mean, something common, so we, we need to take it. So definitely we need to pass one for that, like for, as you gave the example for student and subject, every student has to take those subjects. Correct, correct. Uh, in that case, so, I uh, and what is your question here? Um, you were, we were working on the employee table and the students one. Uh, another table with the employee ID. Okay. Uh, I yeah, I didn't get the question actually. Um, sorry. I'm not like, sure. um, yeah. So we were working. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, um, like uh, we had the table before, like uh, employee and address one that we were working on left and right join and all that. Correct. So there we were joining it with the employee ID. If we have to do the cross join like that, so how we were doing it? The cross join, how we were, it was working on the employee and address. No, but for cross join, when you write a condition, it, it doesn't make sense actually. So we normally don't use, uh, uh, don't use conditions for cross join. But if you still want to do it, for example, I want to print uh, only for Ravi. Okay, so here, for example, let me show you. So here, I want to write a cross join here like this. I don't want to print, I want to print only for Meghna, I can write a join here. So cross join on, I can write here, s one dot student name is equal to Meghna. So it, it will not show me for other records. And I, I don't think we can use on condition. Um, let me check whether we have where condition. Yeah, it is showing only for Meghnath. So even in that case, in employee case also, you can write where condition and put, uh, if you want only for employee 1. Yes, yeah. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, okay. So if you want to write uh, a where condition for a cross sign, you can actually write it. And if you want only for, say for example, student name Meghnath, if you want to see all the subjects, you can write like this. Yeah, that's a good question. Even I never uh, got, I mean, got a thought like uh, writing where condition, but this is a good point. So thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so you can write a where condition and you can filter out the records from the result of cross join. Okay. Yeah, so that is about uh, the different types of joins we have. And the mostly used join is inner join. 90% of the joins which you write will be inner joins and the remaining will be outer joins. Okay, yeah. Now we'll go and discuss on stored procedures. We'll see what is a stored procedure. Okay, sometimes what happens is you might need to uh, save the details into the database. Okay, for example, let me show you this way. For example, take for example, I have a screen like this. I have a screen like this where I have employee name or I have, I have subject. I have take for example, student name. And I want to save this student name into the students table. And this is a button. Okay, so take for example, okay, so I want to design a screen like this in ASP.NET, so I want to save the details. So let me do one small thing. Yeah, so this button looks better now. Okay, so I want to enter student's name and when I click on save, I want the details to be saved in this in this table 
which I have here, for example, I have a table. What is the table name? Students table. So now for that, what I, what I can do is I can write a stored processor and I can call that stored processor from the code. So, so let me do select star from students. So let me execute this. So I have now Meghna and Bharat. Now a stored processor is, let me open this PDF document which I have. Okay, so a stored processor is a group of transact SQL statements. It can be insert statement, update statement, or delete statement, or any statement which is which is TSQL statement compiled into a single execution plan. We'll understand what is this definition means. Okay, so let's try to create a simple stored processor. So I'm I'm going to use this syntax which I have here. So I'm going to copy this just for the syntax. Now I'm going to create a new stored processor. So here I'm going to create a processor, processor name which is add student details. And what is the parameter for me? The parameter for me is student name which user is entering in the text box. And what is the data type of name? It will be mostly varchar. And here, what I need to do, I need to add. Okay, so so now here, if you see, um, I just I'm I'm trying to create a processor. The name of this processor is add student details, and I'm passing the parameter student name. And here, I don't need this variables. <coughs> I want to add the student name into the table. So what I can write here is I can do here insert. Insert into what is the table name? The table name is students. And then I can write here values. I can put here what is the value which I want to insert? I want to add student name. <coughs> That's it. So so what this stored pressure will do is a stored pressure is something like which will take parameters and which will do some operations for you. So these are all called transact SQL statements. And this will have execution plan. For example, you have around five statements, it will execute them in sequence. Or you can write in if you can write some conditions also inside this inside the statement, inside this uh, store pressure. For example, whatever you are seeing now is a simple store pressure which will take a parameter like student name and it will insert this value into the database table students so let me execute this let me create this tape store processor so this is the syntax create processor processor name and list of parameters you have and you write to write as begin and end statement and inside that you need to write your code so let me execute this now the store processor has been created once the stored processor has been created, you can see that here. So let me refresh this. And in this tables, you can see the tables which you created. So in this tables, when you expand tables in your database, you can see the tables which you created. I created address table, I created employee table, I created students and subjects table. When I expand this programmability, inside this programmability, I will see stored processors. We expand the store preserves. I can see one store preserve which is add student details. Okay, so let me test the store preserve whether that's working fine or not. To test a store preserve, all you need to do is you need to write your exec space. You need to write the store preserve name, add student details, and pass a parameter. For example, I want to add Shankar name to the red table. So this is how. I need to test a store pressure. EXEC followed by SP name followed by the parameter. So why I'm giving one parameter? Because my store pressure is taking only one parameter. If I have multiple parameters, I just need to give comma. I need I need to give uh, 
sorry not comma i need to give space and give like this okay so since i only have one parameter i'm just giving center so let's execute this now one row got affected now i executed this through preserve by passing name shankar so let's verify whether the name shankar has been added in student table you can see here the shankar has been added so <coughs> on a high level the stored pressure is used to do database operations either insert update delete statements with some sequence it will take parameters and this is very simple stored pressure which i am explaining here so remember the syntax for now down the line i will be explaining the uh, little bit more complex uh, stored pressures when we are dealing with uh, ado.net concepts but for now you have to keep this thing keep the syntax in your mind okay and keep uh, and think that a stored pressure is used to add or update records in the database okay for now understand like this we will see more in the further classes okay so any doubts here there are few any doubts here please feel free to ask me if you have any doubts hi uh, i have one question yeah yeah in shankar uh, i'm seeing all the capital letters instead of that one i want only s as a capital and remaining ever everything is small letters yeah uh, even though just like that i want to change it to something like that one capital and the remaining are small letters okay yeah yeah that's a good question so so here uh, i'm just keeping a note so that's a good question so even though i'm adding s a n k or shankar in capital letters he's asking that he want to add the uh, uh, those things in s capital and the remaining in small letters so for that we have something called uh, methods like to upper to lower or uh, we have some string methods for example if you see here i'll show you some string functions so okay so here we have something called upper lower or like this we have different methods so so what you can do here is you take the first character so how do i get first character i can take like this left of whatever i have i will get that so now what i can do here is i can in that store pressure what i can do here is uh, i can declare some other variable declare uh i can declare like uh, at the rate temp temp name i can write like varchar 20 and then i can write set at the rate temp name is equal to at the rate student name now i have this temp name which is student name now what i need here i want my first character to be capital and the remaining to be small for that what i will do is i will convert everything to small characters so set at the rate temp name is equal to lower and i'm going to convert at the temp name now my lower my temp name will have all in lower case letters now what i can do here is i can actually take um here i want the first character to be let me go here i want my first character to be in upper case so what i can do here is i can get this first character let me take uh, so i have all this temp name is having all in lower case letters okay so for those who think that this is confusing don't worry i am going to tell some logic to convert uh, for the question for ravi so now i want to get the only the first character so what i'll do here is set at the rate i'll declare another temp variable Yeah, these types of things we normally uh, see in real time. Declare at the rate uh, temp name two varchar twenty. 
Now what I'll do here is I'll write here set at the rate temp num2 is equal to upper of left of at the rate temp num comma how many characters one sorry left of one character so I want only first character to be upper plus right of I want temp name comma how many values I want I want something called length of length of length of length of temp name minus one I'm not sure how many of you will understand this. I'm going to explain this. So I'll put here at the rate. Now I have this first character into this plus right off this comma what is there in the right here? Two means it will take two characters. So length minus one means it will take the remaining, leaving the first character, it will take remaining characters. Length minus one. So let's try to copy this and put here. Okay, I'm good now. So let's see whether this works or not. Uh, if it works, I'm going to explain you this. Okay, so I want to alter this. So let me put alter procedure. So now I'm just putting alter. Let me execute this. I change the store procedure. So let me call uh, add students with all capital letters uh, bar and uh, some other name we will give like Chandra. So I'm giving all capital. Let me execute this. And let's see in the table. I'm seeing C capital and C H A N D R is small. So if you see the store pressure here, what I'm trying to do is I whatever you are passing this, I am taking this to a temporary variable. And then I'm converting this to all lowercase letters. So my tenth name will have all lowercase letters. Now I am converting this to upper. What I'm converting to upper? Left of this one character. So left will give the number of characters from the variable. So for this variable, if I put 1 here, this will give me only one character. If I put 2 here, left of 2 characters. But I only want one character to be in upper. So I am writing here left of one character which is upper. And the remaining characters I want, right of, I am putting this variable, comma number of characters I want. I want total length minus 1 because I don't want the first character. So I am converting to this uh, first to first character upper and I am taking remaining adding it to temp name 2 and I am inserting this temp name 2. Ravi is it clear enough? Yeah, it's clear now. I don't think how many of you are clear, the, clear with this. Who else is clear with this? Okay, so this is what we call as execution plan. So we'll have some logic here and we'll do the insert. So this types, these are the things which commonly you see. And this is perfect question which Ravi asked me like he wants to see the first character in capital. Even in real time we get requirements like this and we have to do like this. Okay. So this is about a store pressure. A store pressure is a set of TS given statements with some execution plan which is mostly used for doing insert update or deletes and here we are doing insert and we have some logic also here okay uh, don't worry if you're not getting this if you're not getting this logic for now but just keep the syntax in your mind for whom it is not clear enough feel free to ask me if it is not clear yeah, I will be updating the video today. Uh, I see a few of you are telling me it's not here. Please go through the recording and I will explain this again in the next class. So I will be sending these two records. As I said already, like I will be sending two recordings at a, at a time for the H2K team. So you will not see the 
uh, you might not see the previous recording as well in the in the course so today i'll send these recordings for them H2K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.